Hello, welcome back. Um, okay, so in the last video, we were, uh, gosh, what were we doing? Oh man, we were doing so much. Uh, we kind of took care of this first task here. Um, we took a look at the data. Uh, you can just do that by clicking on the thing in the environment. It shows up just like that, easy enough. Um, and then we fixed it by renaming the columns uh, by using this names in conjunction with the C and then specifying the actual names of the columns, very easy. Uh, and then we had to, uh, this is a little technical here on line 14. Um, usually you won't have to do this, but it's, it's good um, because we needed to restructure the sex column here because it was just as a character. And what we actually need is for the computer to realize that it's got two levels. Uh, of males and females. And we did that by specifying sex with the dollar sign here. Pops up automatically, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, R. Uh, and then we just use this as factor function, booyah, and we just put the same thing in there, okay? We use the structure function, str, to get the structure, which shows this here. And then the summary of um, the data set, summary function of the data set to give us the traditional five slash six number summary. Very cool. Oh man, so that's uh, that made us $5,000. And what we need to do next is subset the data, right? Because we only uh, care about the males, or at least the scientist from the study only cares about the males in this study. For some reason they, they did, uh, they recorded both males and females, uh, but they only want the males. They only want to analyze the males. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? We have tons, oh man, we have tons of ways to subset the data. We could do it by the row number and the column number or the observation and the variable, uh, but we can also do it by the name within the column, okay? Uh, which is like M or F or whatever, okay? Which is pretty great. Um, so there's a ton of different ways. Some of them are very intuitive, some of them ain't. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so if you've taken linear algebra before, which you don't have to, <laughs> it's not a prereq for this class, not even a little bit. Um, but if you have, you'll notice that um, the way that R and the way that most programming languages um, sort of specify locations within a data set is the same way that you would with a matrix, okay? Um, where the first value in the square bracket represents the row, the row number, uh, and the second one represents the column number, okay? Uh, between the square brackets, right? So in R, uh, we use the square brackets, always the square brackets in R when we're specifying row numbers and column numbers, okay? Where the first one is always the row number and the second one is always the column number, okay? So row, column, easy enough. Uh, and we just tack that on to whatever we have the data set called, and that's that, okay? I promise it's not gonna be too, too difficult. Um, and just to kind of get you warmed up to that idea, got a little pop quiz, <laughs> not graded, of course, um, but I do highly recommend you pause the video just for a moment uh, and see if you can't fill in these using this sort of formula, right? So each one of these is either gonna give us one value or uh, a series of values, depending on if there's more than one uh, sort of specification in here, okay? So pause the video, give it a try, and I'll see you in just a second. Okay, <laughs> we're back. So uh, I hope you tried it. If you didn't, no worries. So let's, uh, let's, let's just get into it. So this first question here um, is data set, and we care about the thing that's in the first column in, sorry, oh my gosh. We care about the thing in the first row in the second column, okay? So that's just gonna be one value. That's gonna be one value, okay? So the answer here, the blank here is the first, first row and the second column. Now, what does that look like in our data? And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do it for each one going back and forth between R, uh, but I will just for this first one so we can kind of get an idea of what we're doing, right? So data set one comma two is the first row and the second column, okay? So if I were to come back here, first row and second column, I don't care about anything that's not the first row and I don't care about anything that's not the second column. Okay, which turns out to be this 106, right? First row, 
first row and then second column, which is this one, okay? 106. Now, just for fun, if I were to come down here and say, you know, okay, from, from example, data set one, two, right? If I were to come down here and use that same structure, muscle and then data set, and then, sorry, <laughs> data set, and then square brackets, and then one, and then two, one comma two, what's gonna happen? Booyah. I run that and it spits out this 106. It spits out the first, the element in the first row and the second column, which is right there. Okay, so with that being said, let's, let's do these other ones too, because we've got some, some extra kind of goodies in here. Okay, so the second one. This colon right here, not a semicolon, but it's a, it's a colon, represents the fact that we want to go through something. We want to take everything that is from this to that, okay? So I want rows three through, you guessed it, seven. Rows three through seven. And now, uh, somebody asked a very good question last semester about this. Um, this is inclusive, okay? So that means that we are grabbing three all the way through, including seven, okay? Not in between. Uh, so you're not grabbing just four, five, and six. We're grabbing three, four, five, six, and seven. Same concept here, uh, where we just wanna grab column six through eight, easy enough. And actually, let me, let me show you that too. Well, <laughs> no, I cannot, because we don't have column six, six through eight. We only have three columns. Uh, I'll show you in just a little bit. Okay, so same kind of idea here, except, except we are specifying two things. We, maybe we don't want to grab uh, rows three through seven, but we only want to grab maybe rows one and four for whatever reason. Well, that's exactly what this is going to do. By specifying the fact that we're putting just two things into this collect function here, we're going to say we just want columns one and, sorry, rows one and four. And that's it. That is it rows one and four, not everything in between, just those two. And same concept, right? C, and then within that function there, put a little comma specifying that it's, uh, we want a few things, that's gonna be two and eight. So data set, we would just want the elements from column, <laughs> from rows one and four, and then from columns two and eight. Easy enough. Well. Okay, here's a new one. Here's something different. Okay, it's a little, a little different, a little weird, but no worries. So it's the same concept as we saw up here, except we have a blank space in the column space. <laughs> we have a blank space there. What does that mean? Well, we know that the colon here represents we want those rows, the first row, the second row, and the third row. We want all of them. So that's rows one through three. And since nothing is specified for the columns, turns out that that means that it's all columns. If we leave that blank, it's going to grab all the columns, not just, not none of the columns, because that wouldn't be anything. It would be all of the columns. So if, if we leave that blank, then it's all of the columns. If we were to switch this around, leave the first one blank, the first before the comma blank, and then put one through three in the column spot, we would grab all of the rows and only columns one through three. Okay. And then the last one, this is fun. This is fun because it's a little different. If we were to then say, well, maybe I want to remove, maybe I want to remove an observation for whatever reason. Okay. Well, then this is what we would do. We say that we want this, this negative sign here represents the fact that that's what we want to get rid of. We want to remove that. So by doing this, by saying this, we're gonna say we want actually all of the rows except row one. And we want all of the columns except column, you guessed it, not even a guess, you know it, except column three, right? So if we wanna specify the fact uh, that it is, that we don't want these two things, we just put a negative sign in front of it. The same concept goes for here too. If you wanted to specify, you know, a list, I mean, things that are maybe sort of out of order as far as uh, organization goes, um, we could just say, well, I don't want uh, rows one through four and I don't want columns two and eight, sorry, 
I don't want rows one and four uh, or columns two and eight. Just do this. Booyah. So that's going to give me everything except these two things that I've specified. It's pretty robust, pretty easy, especially when you're trying to get kind of, uh, oh, kind of <clears throat> detail oriented there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. Uh, and then we'll move on to some more applied things with this, with the same concept. And I will see you there next time.